on behalf of Surfrider. If you could state your name again for the record, please, and your time will be limited to five minutes. Hi, Mandy Sackett with the Surfrider Foundation on behalf of our Monterey chapter. Um, I'd like to thank commissioners and staff for your extra time and consideration of our concerns on this item. Um, Surfrider commented with concerns about the legacy of contamination in Moss Landing Harbor sediment um, at the December hearing, and we appreciate the extra investigation by staff. Um, however, in the updated staff report, Coastal Commission only provided more information to the federal review process. Um, and did not investigate whether any type of sort of verification sampling was feasible. Um, and we also made this inquiry with the Harbor District, but they were unresponsive. We don't want to hold up or delay dredging operations any further. We'd like to stand by our concerns, however. If it's not possible for this permit, we'd like to suggest that Coastal Commission staff look into whether any type of verification sampling is possible, at least for future permits. At this point, the dredging will commence almost a full six months since the sediment sampling um, took place. And we do value and understand that the federal review process was very thorough and appreciate it. Um, verification testing could be done within a much closer time frame from when the dredging takes place. We envision this as sort of an abbreviated sampling that could take, take, take place up to one week prior to dredging, and the purpose would be for Coastal Commission staff to verify, not necessarily going through the entire process again. Um, based on our research, there's several options to do that. Um, there's a, set of, a sediment bioassay for chemicals only takes 48 to 72 hours in the lab. Um, they could also do a bioassay water column test, which is another option, only about 48 to 72 hours in the lab, and that might pr indicate presence, presence of chemicals in the sediment. An or a lab could just test for presence at all of chemicals in a similar time frame. You know, the, this winter has brought many storms and swells that surely have altered and stirred up harbor sediment and may have uncovered legacy harbors, uh, legacy toxins in the harbor. Surfrider is a proponent of beneficial reuse of sediment, and we'd like to see this be done in a thoughtful manner. This would not be the first time that California goes above and beyond federal standards. Um, this permit would authorize dredging and disposal of up to 550,000 cubic yards of material over the 10 years with up to 80,000 cubic yards in any given year, as you've heard. Sandy material that is suitable for beneficial reuse would be disposed of at a beach replenishment site adjacent to the harbor, and this permit does not contain a limit as to how much sediment could be placed annually onto the beach sites. We're sort of just going on speculation. So conceptually, it could be up to 80,000 cubic yards, which is certainly enough to impact wildlife and recreational resources. There's no limit in the permit conditions. So we just ask commissioners and staff to require surf monitoring in each and every sand nourishment project. Surf monitoring could be a standard, should be a standard condition. Surfing as a recreational resource is one of the most valuable economically and intrinsically to our state and brings an enormous amount of revenue. It's prudent for us to continually work to better understand the impacts of sand nourishment and how it impacts our recreational resources. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Sackett. Mr. Bodensteiner, do you feel any need to put any 